Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, try to make it uh, as quick as possible. Yeah, so this is a case study proposal from uh, Sweden. And the main person behind this is uh, John Leander, who is a, a member of this uh, cost action, but he couldn't come here, working at KTH in Stockholm. And we have another contributor, Ivar Björnsson from Lund University. And uh, this is uh, within a, a national project that we have in Sweden called Big Brew. Brew means bridge. So it's uh, kind of a fu funny name for this. And it's uh, really inspired uh, by this uh, uh, cost action. So we really try to contribute uh, in a way that uh, we think uh, could be practical because uh, the main financier of this is the uh, Swedish Road Administration. So we try to uh, look into what kind of methods they use and what are the problems that uh, they have. We just had a reference group meeting uh, two weeks ago. Uh, so they are really uh, excited about uh, this to have a case study. We need this cost action. So this is the bridge. Uh, it's in uh, central Stockholm. So the Ström Bridge, uh, you, see, you might see it's really somewhere in the middle of Stockholm. Uh, and uh, it's a quite important bridge. Uh, if uh, there would be a traffic disruption, that would, ha uh, that would be have uh, quite significant consequences. It's mostly uh, commuter trains, but also intercity trains and freight trains uh, uh, pass over the bridge. More than 500 uh, trains every day. Here's some data about uh, the bridge. It's a steel bridge, uh, six spans, continuous uh, uh, girder bridge. Total length is about almost 200 meters and built uh, in the 50s. So it's a quite old bridge. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, it's, uh, it's quite important in both uh, for the region and also uh, for the country. And uh, this is a typical uh, steel railway bridge. Uh, it uh, has uh, numerous uh, uh, fatigue critical details. For example, I don't have a pointer here, but uh, between the main beam and the cross beams, uh, uh, that's typical where they found the uh, cracks, this uh, web gap uh, cracking phenomena that occurred uh, quite a lot uh, of uh, similar uh, cracks. Uh, but we didn't uh, select that case because those were repaired. We thought it's, uh, it's uh, even more interesting to look at another detail, which is uh, like uh, denoted with this uh, blue circle here in the middle. Um, between the stringer beam and the uh, lateral basing, uh, where there are no cracks, but uh, theoretical assessments and also uh, strain measurements indicate that there should be. So according to the, the current regulation, uh, the, the fatigue life has uh, been exhausted. So then it's an interesting question, what should we do then? Uh, is that okay or do we have to uh, do something with this? So that's, that's sort of the inspiration of, uh, of this case study. This has been investigated quite a lot from about 2008, I think. So there are a lot of publications uh, and uh, we have data on this. Uh, so we try to put this uh, in this uh, condition assessment uh, framework problem. And uh, that's a typical uh, situation where uh, after the visual inspection, uh, the, 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 manage, the, the, the manager of the road ad administration uh, has to uh, make a decision. Should we further investigate uh, the problem, do a more detailed assessment, or should we do some kind of intervention? So th this, this is what we are focusing uh, right now with this. We looked at, uh, th there has been several research projects in Europe, uh, also from this cost action, when uh, these uh, levels of assessments are uh, categorized in different ways. So we looked into this. I don't, I don't want to talk about all the details because we have very uh, uh, little time. 
then we thought that usually when they move to a higher level of assessment, that is, uh, could be categorized as three different uh, things. Either uh, uh, improving the, the model of sophistication, that's how we called it, like a structural modeling, you can have uh, uh, a more detailed model, a more advanced structural model, or the, how you consider uncertainties, like uh, going to a, a higher level of uh, uh, probabilistic assessment, or it could relate to the uh, information content in your uh, assessment. So, so th this, uh, th this is the inspiration of uh, a way of thinking. And then we uh, illustrated this, uh, uh, these uh, different uh, uh, directions uh, in this cube with uh, this uh, bridge. So looking at the modeling sophistication, first you can do, a, uh, one can do an initial assessment, a conventional uh, assessment with a, a quite crude simplified model and then can go to uh, higher levels. Uh, and then uncertainty consideration, that could also be successfully uh, or uh, subsequently uh, increased and this is illustrated with this cube. This was just a guide, guidance for us, how this uh, thinking is made. Uh, and uh, we thought that that could, that could be interesting to see how from the, the origin of these axes, you should uh, uh, try, to, uh, try to get further and further in uh, all directions, typically. So this is illustrated here with the including uh, more and more information that could be collected on the real structure. And how this uh, connects then to uh, our cost action. Here are just some uh, numerical examples from this uh, uh, case. So this has been uh, analyzed with uh, 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 reliability-based uh, methods. Uh, in this, and you can see here that in this first initial assessment indicated that the, the fatigue life is uh, over, so it's uh, insufficient the detail following the, uh, the guidelines for uh, existing bridges in Sweden. But then, of course, or uh, quite often with uh, more advanced methods, you can prove that uh, there's still, uh, uh, still uh, remaining capacity or remaining service life. And then, uh, what we thought, what is, what is interesting then, then uh, the road administration has to decide on this, if they should go on a further level, that will have a cost, either collecting information or just uh, paying more for the consultant companies who uh, help them with this. But how these could be compared? So that, that, that we thought could be a very good, very simple example to focus on. Uh, and and th that is relatively easy. So we, we started to do uh, this with this posterior, pre-posterior analysis, uh, but uh, with just tentative numbers. So uh, like the cost of the inspection here is uh, one unit and the, the, the repair cost was uh, set to 100 and the failure of the detail is, uh, is uh, more expensive. And, uh, but we talked to the uh, road administration and they could provide us with uh, realistic numbers. So I think that would be quite interesting to see. Hmm? And yeah, I think that was it. Some, yeah, yeah, just some references. So uh, the good thing is that it's uh, quite well documented and we have uh, previous uh, experience and models that we could use. Yes, uh, hmm? thank you for the presentation. No? that, um, but you've uh, said it already, uh, in connection to the expenses uh, we have to uh, uh, pay mm -hmm. for doing these analyses. Um, so, and uh, the decision tree uh, you've shown, mm -hmm. um, so that's a value of information decision tree and it contains uh, uh, experiments, but uh, actually uh, I was talking about information uh, acquirement mm -hmm. and actually uh, using different
different uh, system models or using different models uh, is similar to uh, an experiment. It's a numerical yeah, 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 yeah. experiment. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think this uh, this is a very good uh, basis for for a case study. And yeah, yeah, and and, and, and we we have we actually I forgot to mention that it's uh, in the project we have more partners. So we have. Uh, two construction companies and consultant and uh, also Chalmers from Gothenburg and uh, yeah w we would like to, to come up with some realistic estimates of like uh, even the engineers work uh, for doing a more detailed assessment uh, how much uh, that will cost yeah. uh, and also the putting up sensors and, 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 and we, we really have to be uh, Persuasive because the the road administration is really is uh, typically very uh, conservative. Yeah, yeah. So actually, what they say, we don't need any uh, any monitoring system for new bridges. We can talk about it after 30 years. Yeah. But that, that's, mm -hmm. that's follow this up. It's a very important aspect, and yeah. I think that could, should be also represented in this graph mm -hmm. uh, that you also look at another dimension of uh, gathering uh, new information or. Uh, Increasing the information content by uh, better modeling. I would also like to uh, postpone the discussion. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Because we are already very, very, very so quick. Follow on, on the third, but, but do you have any idea what is the probability of uh, getting better information yeah. to increase the granularity or complexity of your model? That would be yeah, a what, what would have an idea? That's a very difficult question, mm. and we should maybe discuss it uh, afterwards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That goes to the model answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, okay. it's a very interesting mm -hmm. topic.